Hello, I'm Floyd Maxwell, JustThinkIt.com. This video is called Consequences of a Spring and Loop Theory, Relativity. In 1905, Albert Einstein came out with special relativity. In 1915, Albert Einstein came out with general relativity. Response was slow as the scientific world struggled to comprehend what Einstein had said in those two papers. Thirty years later, relativity was an overnight success, drastically altering the physics landscape. The use of relativity became chic, Einstein became the century's MVP, and physics became Einstein-based. So relativity is el supremo? With such an overwhelming favorable response, it goes without saying that special relativity and general relativity are completely correct, right? Well, it turns out you can never prove that a theory is correct, a fact accepted in academic circles, but ignored in media circuses. But we know relativity is correct, yes? Well, a better question to ask is, do you believe in relativity? And of course, most scientists do. Spring and loop theory is not so sure. What is wanted is not the will to believe, but the wish to find out, which is its exact opposite, Bertrand Russell. Assumption starts with ASS. Few like to be wrong, scientists even less so. So how do scientists avoid endorsing the wrong stuff? It all comes down to those initial assumptions. Four out of five doctors smoke when paid to say so. Asbestos is the perfect insulating fiber. Strong, light, durable, nature made. Just dig it up, liberate them wondrous fibers from their columnar bundles, install and presto, job done. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Okay, so assumptions can be trouble. But relativity, above all other theories, is built on the best assumptions, um, right? Well, let's find out. Barely anyone is willing to question the entire system of assumptions that has peaked with the introduction of dark energy, bankrupting physics. Not so special sauce. Special relativity is based on objects moving in straight lines at constant velocities. The 800 pound assumption, no accelerations and no gravity. The problem? Once you have a single proton in the universe, you have gravity-bent space. Add a second proton, and you have gravity-based attraction and acceleration. So, special relativity is out. What about general relativity? Okay, in retrospect, special relativity does some kind of conditional. Luckily, general relativity sounds like it might be a solution. Generally, the general case is the one intended for general use, right? Incredibly, general relativity is layered directly on top of special relativity. General relativity is literally special relativity plus gravity. Spring and loop theory calls this useless plus, uh, it doesn't matter because you'd still get something useless. Correct theories of physics are perfect things, and a replacement theory must be a new perfect thing, not an imperfection added onto an old perfect thing. This is the essence of revolution the replacement of the old with a new, not the adding of more crap to the old. Richard Feynman. But is it legal to badmouth relativity? Back up a bit. Just who or what does spring and loop theory think it is, picking on the greatest mind in history? And who is to say that spring and loop theory isn't filled with even more flaws? Any intelligent fool can make things bigger, more complex, and more violent. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. Albert Einstein. From Cosalt 7, the atom, spring and loop theory is irreducible, both in scale and in number of components. This doesn't by itself make spring and loop theory correct, but it does make it the simplest possible theory of everything. One refresher coming up. Spring and loop theory is a new theory of physics, or it was in 2012. Today, spring loop theory is 20 papers into a rather surprising journey that all began with a quest to understand gravity. Weird, right? It might be a bit of a shock that gravity is still not understood. Newton studied it half a millennium ago, and F equals MA is the four-character law we've used ever since. Einstein merely refined this law through relativation, but underneath, F equals MA was still there. What can possibly be left to understand? 
It is perfectly sensible to question whether there is something mistaken about our understanding of gravity, rather than continuing to search for a modern-day equivalent of phlogiston. Alexander Unzucker in 2013. Pretty much everything. Did you know that after coming out with special relativity and general relativity, Einstein spent the next 30 years unsuccessfully trying to understand gravity? Or that he was never successful at unifying the two forces, electromagnetism and gravity, known at that time? Richard Feynman, possibly the funniest physicist not named Albert Einstein, worked the gravity room equally hard and was equally unrequited. The point? If special relativity and or general relativity were so great, why didn't they lead to more great stuff? The standard model, because it excludes gravity, is an incomplete account of reality. It is like a theory of human nature that excludes sex. John Horgan Karma crowns or kills. Kids are slow to learn. Prefrontal development is remarkably sluggish. Still, every bruised shin and burnt finger helps. In time, children discover that mom was right all along, or they become an example to the other kids. Be careful what you ask for. The point is that you live and die by your assumptions. If they are good, then good will follow good, and your building will rise. However, if you make poor assumptions, they will be the death of you. So, kids, make a note. Hand flapping generates insufficient lift to drag. A frog won't give you warts, unless you have a best friend named Frog. Teachers don't know everything, especially physics teachers. The existing mainstream physics theories are so far off track they are more likely to produce spongiform encephalopathy than insight. So, now what? Okay, so special relativity and general relativity are useless. Then how come everyone continues to use them? It turns out that staying with broken theories is what physicists are exceptionally good at. To understand why, one needs to consider what is at stake. Selective hearing. Ever noticed how a child in the process of cookie hijacking is also hearing challenged? Earn first, have pangs of conscience later, is not only a good idea, it's the law. To tempt theorists, anyway. And besides, no one ever got fired for backing relativity. Even when the experts all agree, they may well be mistaken. Bertrand Russell Cronyism leads to hemorrhoids. Physicists today spend most of their time on the john. Dark matter may appear plentiful, but putrid is as putrid does. Time for some, if only, air sanitizer. If only we could detect more particles. If only we could prove supersymmetry. If only someone could unify physics. Who are we kidding? The last thing most physicists want is answers. Because there is no money in answers. There is infinitely more money in lies. Propaganda? Baloney. Misinformation. Hope. Faith. And wishing. I wish. I wish I was wrong about physics. For that matter, I wish I was wrong about fluoridation and microwave radiation. If you think I am, please feel free to challenge my assumptions. No matter how paranoid or conspiracy-minded you are, what the government is actually doing is worse than you imagine. William Bloom, former U.S. State Department employee. Such a lonely word. Just be sure you make an honest appraisal. Thinking spring-and-loop theory is wrong because it is different is a hollow argument. Not that this gives pause to the trolls. Knowing that spring-and-loop theory is an ether theory doesn't let you off the proof hook either. Heck, even Einstein thought there was an ether. He just couldn't decide what to call it. Check out Ludwig Kostrow's exquisitely detailed Einstein and the Ether for all the semantic variations. At any given moment there is an orthodoxy. A body of ideas which is assumed that all right-thinking people will accept without question. It is not exactly forbidden to say this, that, or the other, but it is not done to say it. Just as in mid-Victorian times it was not done to mention trousers in the presence of a lady. Anyone who challenges the prevailing orthodoxy finds himself silenced with surprising effectiveness. A genuinely unfashionable opinion is almost never given a fair hearing either in the popular press or in the highbrow periodicals. George Orwell So what's the point? Special relativity is crippled by its base assumptions. 
and general relativity is built on top of special relativity. Little more needs to be said about relativity. You obviously can't move forward with it. But what does matter is what you are feeling right now. No pain like brain pain. There are few things more difficult than admitting you've been on the wrong track the whole time. To do so, you have to first be able to accept that most of your steps down that wrong road have been futile. There are two types of pain, one that hurts you and the other that changes you. Those valuable contacts, courses, and contracts might not be. At a minimum, everything you thought you knew will have to be re-examined. Fortunately for most, this proves to be an impossible task. Occasionally a man stumbles over the truth. Most dust themselves off and continue walking as though nothing had happened. Winston Churchill Cosalt Relativity's target market? The few, the proud, the Cosaltians. Afflict the comfortable is not only our battle cry, it is the only cry of a living theory anyway. The history of cosmology has every now and then confronted us with a radical change in our world view. It would be utterly naive to think that we finally got it right some 15 years ago, bankrupting physics. Or 111 years ago. Boat rockers apply within. Physics has been in a completely useless state for 111 years. Yes, relativity has been the worst thing since well, some other bad thing more than 111 years old. If you know a good example, please let me know. Because prior to 1905, physics knew what it was doing. The most useless are those who never change through the years. James Barry. King Friedrich Wilhelm IV of Prussia once teased his royal astronomer. Well, Arjelander, anything new happening in the sky? Does your majesty already know the old things? Truth ages the most gracefully. Newton, Maxwell, Preston, Poincaré, and many more all thought the same thing when it came to the ether. Stuff didn't attract other stuff without a medium of exchange. Something had to be doing something to make one end of a magnet attract the other, and that something was etheric. Light could no more propagate through empty space than sound could propagate without matter. There's only one step from the sublime to the ridiculous. Napoleon Bonaparte. Today's cop-outs. Physicists, like Frank Wilczek, who are otherwise smart enough to know there is an ether, choose not to call it the ether. Einstein had more words for the ether than anyone. In fact, Einstein spent more time playing games with ether words than he did realizing that what is needed are working models. Other physicists say there are fields in space that has no matter, so the fields must be energy. But field theorists don't call that energy, energy, thus earning the big field theorist bucks. A generation of physicists has lost any sight of land. Alexander Unzicker. String theorists have their string, only they don't because there's nothing stringy about string theory. For all it has accomplished, and ever will, it should be called fantasy theory, string fiction, or not even stringy theory. Then there is gauge theory. Does the word gauge sound right to you? I hear gauge and I think of a measuring device or the distance between two railway tracks. Well, don't trouble yourself. Turns out gauge theory is field theory only for those trying for the prodigious gauge theory bucks. It is mostly unorthodox thinkers isolated from the scientific community who have achieved major breakthroughs. Alexander Unzicker there is really only one market. The only group of people Cosalt Relativity will benefit are those who actually think for themselves. An exceedingly small group. I mean, consider the credentials required. Superman versus Higgs man. Able to leap tall mounds of dark matter at a single bound. Faster than a knee-jerk reaction. More powerful than the LHC. The Higgs doesn't take us any closer to a unified theory than climbing a tree would take me to the moon. John Horgan It's not a big turnout for auditions. I'll give you one. Alexander Unzicker Physics professor and author of a couple of coffee table books you've probably glanced through, Bankrupting Physics, and The Higgs Fake. I know of no one who sees more flaws and sees them more accurately and insightfully than Professor Unzicker. But then Sheila Jones co-authored Bankrupting Physics, so I'll give you two. 
If you know a sec third, please let me know, and I'll dispatch a rescue party. No doubt a pack of wolves is at their door as we speak. End note. So does any part of relativity work? Well, yes, sort of, but for the wrong reasons, and giving the wrong answers when you need them most. Relativity is not Planck-based, so it keeps yielding those pesky infinities and singularities. Relativity is not gravity-based, so it's not extensible. Relativity is not complete, so it can't unify anything. At least relativity equates mass and energy. But people before Einstein equated mass and energy. But at least Einstein derived the equation. But that equation is built on bad assumptions. Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed.